Welcome to Be Well with MS podcast, the podcast that aims to provide information and support for those living with multiple sclerosis. Today, we're going to answer some of the common questions about MS, including signs, triggers, causes, and diagnosis. First of all, let's talk about the what is MS. MS is a multiple sclerosis, is a chronic disease that affects the central nervous system. It damages the protective covering of the fibers, causing a range of symptoms, including numbness, tingling, muscle weakness, vision problems, difficulties to coordinate, uh, loads of pains and aches, muscle spasms. Oh, loads, loads of things going on at the same time. It's difficult to know. Is, is it fibromyalgia? Is it MS? Is it What is it? A lot of people are being mislabeled at this stage, being depressed, anxious. They think they, it's something that is going in, in their heads. So overwhelming for majority. I can't believe sometimes people come 10 years later from having these symptoms, which is shame because we are losing the window of therapeutic window to give appropriate specific MS treatments. MS is not fatal disease. Remember that it's really important, but it can cause significant disability over the time. There is no known cure for MS, but there are treatments that can help manage symptoms and slow down the progression of MS. In particular, if we start it early. So if you have a creepy tingle in your body, don't wait. Just go and see somebody about and talk, discuss. Even if it is nothing, if it is a depression or fibromyalgia, or whatever, at least you know that. You need to know that always. Now, let's talk about the what triggers, uh, you know, MS. What, what are the signs? The signs of MS can be variety of different things and they come and go and you know if we talk about the relapses they they start abruptly patients have symptoms for two weeks and then it disappears some signs can remain for a longer period of time they never disappear they they just there basically and that includes numbness tingling visual problems muscle weakness fatigue coordination problems and as a rule triggers for multiple sclerosis are stress, infection, heat, temperature changes, cold and, and hot, uh, physical exertion, some exercises could bring on more symptoms. These are potentially triggers that can cause symptoms or to flare up and worsen them, but they, they are not relapses. We call it, this is a pseudo relapse rather than a relapse. You know, if we can identify the exact trigger, you know, it's just a worsening of the MS symptom, nothing to worry about. It's important to be aware that, um, you know, you, you just do one step at a time and, and adjust your life. If it, is, if it is a heat that brings on more symptoms, you just cool the temperature. You know, that that's that's important in the shower, like, you know, or bath, you know, don't have a hot bath. And, you know, just navigate and explore and bring that awareness of what your body needs the most. Now, um, let's talk about the potential cause of MS. We don't know. That's the honest answer. What exact causes MS is not known. But it's believed that it's an autoimmune condition where the immune system mistakenly attacks the myelin, the sheet, uh, that covers the, the nerve. So imagine that there is a rubber around the wire, electric wire. That's a myelin sheet. And when you lose that myelin, um, everything becomes in a, you know, in a different way, function-wise, uh, slower more enhanced sensations, etc., etc. So it's just an inappropriate signal that comes from the central nervous system or spinal cord um, that brings on more sort of a symptoms that it's purely a process of demyelination. In initially, it's an inflammation, then changes the whole myelin, the rubber around the wires, and then people develop um, loads of symptoms. Massive amount of symptoms. Never met anybody that has got exactly the same symptom patient, even if they have the same duration of the disease, the same age, gender, everything, they live maybe close next to each other, they have different symptoms, different presentation. While MS is not usually hereditary, you can't, you know, get, you know, via genes, this condition, there is some evidence that genetics can play a role in, in development of this condition. There are some some theories around an established sort of a gene, and we see people coming, um, families coming with with ms basically brother sister cousin you know it's, it's worth noting and we do document that in the clinical notes so how is ms being diagnosed uh there is no single test uh for ms the specific one that you just do one and you say oh that's it no we, we haven't got one uh usually it involves a combination of the medical history physical exam neurological exam 
diagnostic tests such as the MRI scan of the brain and spinal cord, lumbar puncture looking at the biologic markers such as oligoclonal bands in the CSF and serum neurofilament level we check these days as well. You know, these are things that we, we still perform and it's sort of a, a condition is a bit of a chameleon, you know, in a way because there's no diagnostic, you know, one test that you would sort of do and say, oh, that's, that's a miss, no, nothing like that. So it's exclusion diagnosis uh, most of the time, so it's worth noting. So um, I'll give you a bit of an analogy of MS. So imagine the highway with cars traveling at high speeds. Uh, the mining sheet is like the road surface, you know, and when it becomes damaged, the car starts to slow down or stop altogether, causing traffic jams and, and delays. It's completely a mess, you know, it's not, it's not great at all. And in, you know, incorporating this analogy into daily life, managing MS is like managing traffic, you know, uh, by taking steps to manage triggers, such as avoiding the rush hours, taking alternative routes, maybe we can reduce the impact of MS on, a, on living with, with MS in general in lives. So, so that these are sort of the important uh, short messages from neurologists, myself, uh, to you guys and I hope you enjoyed it and if you have any comments any questions anything else you would like to know about this condition please do that in the comment um, on the media platforms TikTok uh, Instagram Twitter LinkedIn you know I'm everywhere so do come in and give a comment and, and ask questions or give me an idea as what other podcasts and what information would you like to know um, I do appreciate for your input uh, because I will feel less alone if you are surrounding uh, me and giving me advice. It's, it's a reciprocal, so it's exchanging information all the time. Thanks for watching and stay well. Be well. Bye for now.